Recovered from the logs of an abandoned North Vietnamese research station, circa 1977. Translated. August 12th, 1962. The American planes overhead have just finished their daily defoliation routes. The air is thick with herbicide. I write this through a gas mask. Our soldiers are suffocating in this toxic environment. We are simply outnumbered in the unfortunate location of our outpost. Luckily, our food supplies remain hidden from aerial view. And we can only hope that none of the chemical finds it, lest we all starve. The only detail keeping me from leaving this wasteland is the generous grant given to us by the Honorable Lao Dong officials. A sum of over ten billion dong. This is enough for us to continue our research into creating an antidote for the American herbicide, Agent Orange. The successful creation of an herbal exfoliant would put an end to the mindless extermination of our crops and provide our citizens and soldiers with sufficient rations. This could be the chance the glorious state of North Vietnam is looking for. Our chemists are extracting samples from the affected plants as I write. Hopefully we will have the exact compound used in producing the diabolical substance by the end of the week. August 15th, 1962 We have at last made essential progress towards our goal, after three grueling days of research. We have narrowed the possible chemical compounds used in Agent Orange to the following. 2,4-D-2,4,5-T isooctyl ester which may even include traces of 2378 TCDD. If such is the case, it is clear that our American enemy is constructing a mass genocide of epic proportions. Lao Tong has cleared the reverse engineering of the herbicide, effective September 1st. We await this day with bated breath. August 16th, 1962. It has been confirmed that Agent Orange contains dioxin, which means it can now be officially considered a bioweapon. However, our suspicions as to why the chemical is present have been disproven. Having salvaged the wreckage of an American plane, we now see that the orange paint, its namesake, used on the barrel has seeped into the solution. This is both disturbing and exciting news. It means that all people who have come into contact with the herbicide are prone to extremely painful ailments, including rashes, blisters, and even cancer of the lungs and prostate. This explains the disease raging through our soldiers. However, it also means that our enemies are much more careless than we originally thought. We are preparing formulas for the impending project, and it cannot come soon enough. Addendum some of the soldiers have entirely lost the skin on their legs and arms. The situation is becoming increasingly dangerous. September cannot arrive soon enough. August 23rd, 1962 The formulas are complete. We look forward to the physical manifestation of the chemical. The air outside has become so thick with defoliant that we must wear full-body hazard suits and gas masks whenever we walk outside. The soldiers that have remained at the site have been taken inside for protection. One positive that I can report, our food supply is still intact and flourishing. High hopes are present among the entire research staff. August 29, 1962 This morning... Some of the spray from an overhead plane leaked into the bunker, causing a severe allergic reaction in one of the hospitalized soldiers. He is currently suffering from anaphylactic shock and is only serving to prove that the experiment must be conducted as soon as possible. I fear for our safety as long as this hateful war continues. August 31st, 1962 we have decided to move our entire sample supply of crops indoors in preparation for the experiment. The plants in question include varieties of wheat, corn, groundnut, indigo and wild rice, all salvaged from our herbicide-proof greenhouse. We plan to remain indoors for the majority of the chemical tests so as to prevent any excess agent from leaking into the base. Our sustainable food crop cannot be moved, unfortunately, 
and we hope to send one volunteer each day to collect enough for the staff and soldiers. We simply cannot afford another casualty. Last we checked, the plot is herbicide-free, so we have relatively high spirits as we enter into the month-long tests of our new chemical, which we have decided to call Agent Indigo, as a protest to the rainbow herbicides employed by the American Army. September 1st, 1962. Day 1 in the bunker. Our staff is concocting a batch of Agent Indigo right next to me, as I write. It looks every bit as exciting as I'd hoped. Our first food run was conducted today, and Pan, our youngest associate, was successful. We now have enough wheat germ and flour to make a healthy bread meal for our entire staff. September 2nd, 1962. Day 2. The first vial of indigo is ready for testing. We only have a limited supply of lab mice, so hopefully they will reproduce quickly. Observations of initial test on mice. Control shows no effect. Sample 1 shows mild skin irritation, but no other adverse side effects. Sample 2 shows no effect. Sample 3 shows minor hair loss on applied area. Plants. Control dies shortly after exposure to orange. Sample 1 with only indigo shows orange resistance on all crops. Sample 2 with indigo and sugar solution shows orange resistance on all crops except groundnut. A productive day overall. We are trying to eliminate all possible side effects so that we do not result in another bioweapon. September 3rd, 1962. Day 3. We have created a new sample that will hopefully eliminate the hair loss and skin irritation. Mice. Control shows no effect. Sample 1 shows no effect. Sample 2 acquires bloodshot eyes and minor irritation. Sample 3 shows minor irritation. Plants. Control dies shortly after exposure. Sample 1 shows resistance on only indigo crops. Sample 2 shows resistance on only indigo crops. Well, it seems there is more work to do. September 4th, 1962. Day 4. Mice. Control shows no effect. Sample 1 shows no effect. Sample 2 shows no effect. Sample 3 shows no effect. Plants. Control dies shortly after exposure. Sample 1 shows resistance on all crops except groundnut. Sample 2 shows resistance on all crops. Now we have something to go on. Groundnut appears to be the most susceptible to orange and least affected by indigo. We may be close and weeks before our deadline. September 7th, 1962. Day 7. I think we may have our formula. We're going to conduct what will hopefully be our final test. Mice. Control shows no effect. Sample 1 shows no effect. Sample 2 shows no effect. Sample 3 shows no effect. Plants. Control dies shortly after exposure. Sample 1 shows resistance on all crops. Sample 2 shows resistance on all crops. This is excellent. We have our product. Addendum. Jiang was today's food runner, and after coming back he said the air was so thick with Agent Orange that he could barely see, and that the majority of his delivery was contaminated in the process. We have to begin rationing our supplies. September 8th, 1962. Day 8. Mice. Control shows no effect. Sample 1 shows no effect. Sample 2 shows no effect. Sample 3 shows no effect. Plants. Control dies shortly after exposure. Sample 1 shows resistance on all crops. Sample 2 shows resistance on all crops. This has confirmed our hopes. Agent Indigo is ready for deployment. 
We may as well start filling our barrel stock with indigo prematurely, since we have over three weeks left to spend down here before the escort arrives. Addendum. After the crew had gone to sleep, I went back to euthanize the mice. Two of the samples show signs of minor aggression and irritation. I have no desire to report this, as it seems benign and should in no way halt our research. September 10th, 1962. Day 10. We have so much indigo crop left over from the experiments that we have trouble finding something to use it for. It was the only crop that did not die in any of the tests. And since it is a dye, after all, we are now using it to stylize the barrels, like the Americans did with theirs. While none of us want to, we must still conduct experiments until at least the 15th as per Lao Tong's orders. From now on, all further observations should be considered arbitrary. Mice. Control shows no effect. Sample 1 shows no effect. Sample 2 shows no effect. Sample 3 shows no effect. Plants. Control dies shortly after exposure. Sample 1 shows resistance on all crops. Sample 2 shows resistance on all crops. Addendum. While euthanizing the mice tonight, one of the bastards bit me on the finger. It was wriggling like a cat was chasing it as I plunged the needle into its fur. And this piqued my interest. Could a delayed side effect be abnormal aggression? While it is insignificant compared to cancer, it is still something to consider. I shall be watching the subjects more closely from now on. September 13th, 1962 Day 13. We had an accident while packing the agent today. Pan had the idea to paint the barrel while it was already full, and it fell over and doused him in the chemical. We've hospitalized him in case any unknown side effects present themselves, although this is unlikely. Mice. Control shows no effect. Sample 1 shows no effect. Sample 2 shows no effect. Sample 3 shows no effect. Plants. Control dies shortly after exposure. Sample 1 shows resistance on all crops. Sample 2 shows resistance on all crops. Addendum. When I went to euthanize the mice tonight, Sample 2 was biting into the flesh of the control, who'd been killed just moments before I arrived. This is highly worrisome. I'm beginning to think the batch is tainted in some way. I'll notify the staff tomorrow that we should produce another batch. September 14th, 1962. Day 14. News of a disturbing nature has just presented itself. Today was my day to collect supplies, and as soon as I stepped through the door, I could see what Jiang had meant. Visibility is frighteningly low, almost as if the clouds had descended upon us. The situation became dire when I arrived at the crop site and found that it had become overrun by Agent Orange. I returned as fast as I could to the base and relayed the news. Luckily, we have enough food to last us two more weeks, which means we should escape the fate of starvation, but only just. Mice. Control shows no effect. Sample 1 shows no effect. Sample 2 shows no effect. Sample 3 shows no effect. Plants. Control dies shortly after exposure. Sample 1 shows resistance on all crops. Sample 2 shows resistance on all crops. Now that we've replaced the old batch with one taken from the sealed barrels, results should be more conclusive. Addendum. Tonight the mouse situation has become serious. All three mice were dead when I checked the cage, with their organs strewn about the floor. I assume there must have been a massive fight between the three in response to one or more turning aggressive. This means that the aggression is a standard side effect, which could potentially lead to murderous intentions. It's imperative that I keep a close eye on Fan, and to not tell the others. September 15th, 1962. Day 15. At last, the final test. 
Hopefully the side effects will go unnoticed by the rest of the crew. Mice. Control shows no effect. Sample 1 shows aggression towards control. Sample 2 shows minor aggression towards control. Sample 3 shows no effect. Plants. Control dies shortly after exposure. Sample 1 shows resistance on all crops. Sample 2 shows resistance on all crops. This is not good. The experiments show that our last four lab mice had an urge to induce violence on one another. Luckily, the staff agreed that it was too late to change it, and that it was already proven to prevent damage from Orange. We're getting to the last of the barrels now, and we still have indigo to spare. Addendum I sincerely believe we are in trouble. We had separated the mice due to the danger of one killing another, and when euthanization time came, all three sample mice had quite literally imploded. Their organs and skeleton were hanging from the outside of their skin, as if they'd been turned inside out. I threw the mice corpses into the furnace and hoped that no one would question their disappearance. Additional addendum. One of the soldiers taking shelter here came into contact with a batch tonight. He's been hospitalized next to Barn. September 22, 1962. Day 22. Jiang found one of the untouched corpses in the damn furnace. I informed him of the situation reluctantly, and fortunately he agreed to keep it quiet. We took the remaining mouse and applied some of the chemical. It was only 17 minutes before it began to convulse wildly, spewing blood out of its orifices. And what we witnessed next was truly horrifying. The mouse's skeleton was forced out of both the mouth and anus, and the skin receded into its ears, eyes, and genitalia. Its muscles were clearly spasming out of control forcing out anything inside the body that wasn't Agent Indigo. After the process was complete, we could see clearly that its veins were pumping the chemical rapidly, with its heart, lungs, kidneys, liver and stomach hanging by thin strands of flesh attached to the skeletal midsection. It was a disgusting sight, and we ordered the staff to quarantine Pan and the soldier. Considering the human inner workings are much larger than a mouse's, it should only be a few more days before it happens. I can barely sleep now, just thinking that this will occur to them. Addendum It's approximately 2.45 in the morning. I can hear moaning from down the hall. I think it's begun. The following is from a set of scribbled notes recovered along with the log. Account of the conversation. The moaning is not stopping. I understand it should take longer for a human to turn compared to a mouse, but it's been over two hours now. It is 3.10 in the morning. I can hear yelling from the quarantine zone. Oh, God. I can hear them. I can hear their screams, of the pain they must be enduring. The screams are being muffled now. It must be close to the end of the process. Jiang is in the room with me. He says Ban has turned, but he's still moving. How is that possible? The soldier has turned now. I can hear the shrieking. I plan to run with Jiang to the storage room. It's the furthest place from the quarantine zone. We just heard glass breaking. One of the soldiers just came running into the room in a panic. He's dripping with sweat and blood, but he claims it's not his own. He claims that Pan and the soldier are still very much alive. I am terrified. We're about to make a run to the storage room. God, what have we done? 
As we were running down the hallway, I caught a glimpse of what used to be Pan, rolling onto the floor with his skin turned inside out. I could hear the soldier still attempting to scream from the quarantine zone. How are they still alive? Zhang just went out to try and salvage some rations from the refrigerator, which involves passing the quarantine zone. May God be with him. Oh, my God. They, they knocked him down. How? How? Oh, my God. I fear I may not live to see an end to the destruction of Agent Orange. What they did to Jiang was disgusting. They... They enveloped him. I heard him screaming. The chemical pouring from their veins onto him. I remember him calling out one last phrase, choking on Agent Indigo. Kill the pain! We left him drowning. It's 5am. The rest of the staff is in here with us. We're huddling around each other, and all we can hear is the muffled moan of those things that used to be human. They... They're rolling their mangled bodies towards us. They just knocked a barrel over next to one of the soldiers. Indigo is all over the floor. The barrel. The barrel. Oh my god. We were so stupid. It was the barrels. It was the damn barrels. We made the same mistake the Americans made. Only this time we may have endangered the lives of everyone in this country. Of course the indigo plant fared so well. The indigo was a chemical agent of its own. The plant material fills some missing piece which, when introduced to organic matter, expels it from the inside. The barrel material just accelerated the effects, and the aggression just made it worse. My god, it's... it's deliberately knocking over the barrels. They're all soaked. Everyone. I'm the only one still clean. I have to go. October 2nd, 1962. Day 33. They lied. Lao Tong never sent back up. It's been a full day since the rescue was promised to arrive, and I can ensure that they are either dead or non-existent. North Vietnam will die because of this. I'm currently at the exit. It's 8.45. I'm standing in the doorway, peering outside. It's dawn, and the herbicide is everywhere. It persists, even though the planes had stopped targeting this area days ago. I cannot see a thing. I can hear gunfire from all around the outpost. Even though it's likely miles away, it is still deafening. But I can still hear them. Those things that used to be my colleagues. I can hear them rolling about the facility, moaning softly as if to say, It's fine. Come be with us. Death is certain, no matter where I go. Although, I think I'd rather stay and face the hell inside this bunker than the hell that's going on out there. The pain endured by those things could never amount to the pain endured by the people of Vietnam who are forced to fight this war. If anyone finds this note, please. Please destroy all that remains of Agent Indigo. The log and notes were discovered by American troops shortly prior to their withdrawal from the country. No trace of the alleged substance Agent Indigo was ever found. No bodies were ever recovered. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. What the hell did I just listen to? I don't know about you, but I thought that was creepy as anything. Damn. 
Well, that is nominated for the Pasta of the Month over on the Creepy Pasta Wiki. And of course, you are free to vote for whichever story you want, but guess which one's got my vote? Damn right. And if you feel like checking it out, I've put a link in the video description so you can go and uh, choose your favourite story of the month. Um, Creepypasta Wiki is a good thing, generally, as far as I'm concerned, and always happy to lend a bit of support and send people their way. Okay, a bit of confusion about last night's uh, sponsor. Some of you weren't so happy about it, but rest assured, I took the money and donated it to a good cause. I have family members who've contracted the coronavirus, and it's an issue that's directly affecting me. So I've donated the money to people who are researching for a cure. Okay, well, my dear friends, I am back again tomorrow night. Bit of a bonus for you on a Thursday, this one. Back again real soon. Till then, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this story today. Really means a lot to me and to the author of the story, of course. Well, if you want to know more about me, I'm pretty much everywhere on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can download my music on SoundCloud. Um, I've got a Patreon if you feel like. Throw me a dollar or two. Very much appreciated. And of course, on Reddit, I have a place where you can leave stories if you want me to read one that you've written. Well, hoping to see you all again very soon. Till then, sweet dreams. Bye-bye.